Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to talk about what we call the reference ellipsoid. So what is that? Well, it turns out that the Earth is not a sphere, and of course most of us know that already. It's more of an a ellipsoid shape. So in order to find the position of a point on the Earth extremely accurately, we wanted to come up with a model, a mathematical model, of the ellipsoid sh shape of the Earth. And that way, any position on the Earth can be found extremely accurately. Turns out, the error that we can now assume is less than two centimeters for any point on the Earth's surface. So how that's done? Well, with satellites, over the many years, we've taken thousands, if not millions of measurements all over the Earth, and therefore mathematically then describing a shape for the Earth. Now it's not a smooth shape by any means because there's undulations that are caused by the gravitational changes as the satellites go over the Earth due to the change in the composition of the Earth's crust and the Earth's mantle and therefore the difference in the gravitational forces there and that's all thrown into the model so the model accounts for all that and so therefore it's an, we're able then to find positions on the Earth's surface extremely accurately. So based upon that, we have the major dimensions of the Earth. We have the semi-major axis, the semi-minor axis, and then the average radius of the Earth. The average radius of the Earth can be, can be found by taking twice the semi-major axis plus the semi-minor axis divided by three, which comes from the ellipsoid equation. And so that ends up being about 6,371 kilometers. Of course, we can calculate it much more accurately than that. So here's the semi-major axis at 6,378 kilometers and the semi-minor axis at 6,356 kilometers with a difference of about 21 kilometers. Now in actuality, we can get it down to the nearest millimeter. So we're probably off by a few millimeters there, but nevertheless, we can get those distances extremely accurate based upon our mathematical ellipsoid model. We also need to account for the flattening. We need to know what that is because as the satellites go around the Earth, we want to understand the flattening of the Earth. In other words, the Earth tends to be wider at the equator than from pole to pole. That's due to the, the uh, rotational motion. And so therefore things tend to get pushed out in that direction uh, due to the Newton's first law, of course. And therefore we need to know what the ratio is between uh, essentially the difference between the semi-major axis and semi-minor axis divided by the semi-major axis and that's called the flattening. We give it the letter F and for the Earth it's 1 over 298.257223563 goes on extremely accurately and that of course that's why we have that very accurate model. Now compared to the Moon it's 1 over 825 so the bigger the denominator the less spherical it is, I mean the less ellipsoid it is, the more it tends to be a sphere and the smaller the number, the more elliptical it is. For Jupiter being a gas planet, of course, it's about almost 7% wider than it is tall from at the equator versus from pole to pole. Uh, notice again that the difference between the semi-major and semi-minor axis can be found extremely accurate down to the nearest millimeter. So it's absolutely amazing what we can do now based upon that model. That's the model upon which we base finding locations on the surface of the Earth extremely accurately and that's why this was done. Um, let's see here. I didn't put any references to when this was done but back in 1984 they came up with the model that was the current model that we're still using today and we'll talk more about that model in a different video. So the bigger the planet, the less, the more uh, it also, yeah, the bigger the planet definitely has an effect on how ellipsoid it is and also the, what it's made out of. Gas planets, of course, are not as structurally solid and so they tend to bulge out more. Uh, I think Saturn is even less. Saturn is more like 1 over 10, I believe. And so therefore, it's even more uh, wide than it is tall relative to Jupiter. Yeah. So gas planets, big planets and gas planets tend to be much more of an ellipsoid compared to smaller objects. Yeah. 